Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, 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 new families. Uh, my name is Mike Marinelli. I'm the Director of Admissions, for those of you who may not know me. I'm a graduate of the class of 2003. Uh, we have a wonderful evening planned for you today uh, with several uh, important people here at Columbus High School. We'll be sharing lots of wonderful information and hopefully we can get to um, answer all of your questions uh, that you may have here tonight in our Columbus New Parent Orientation uh, Town Hall meeting. All right, first up, I will be uh, going to share with you a wonderful slideshow presentation. So our introduction, administrators, um, our health and wellness will be covered tonight. Um, discipline, attendance, athletics, general information, uh, a little bit of development, as well as uh, some campus life for all you new families out there. But first, as we start everything here at Christopher Columbus High School, uh, please welcome the head of our campus ministry department. Please welcome Mr. Jerry Gonzalez. Good evening, Columbus family. Campus ministers are present to serve our students and parents. As we begin the year, we will announce opportunities for faith and spiritual development. Feel free to reach out to a campus minister. Our emails appear on the Columbus website, faith and service section. And I want to remind you that if there are any situations that are happening that you feel that your son would be good for him to be able to, to speak to someone, or even you yourselves to as parents, just know that for spiritual direction and companionship, we're also here for all of you. Maris belonged to one of the spiritually rich families in the Catholic Church. Our personal faith, manner of sharing in the mission of the gospel, and means of forming Christian community are all shaped by the spirituality of our founder, St. Marceline Champagne. Also, through the development and teaching, he taught who we know today as the Marist Brothers and have been developed by successive generations of Marists worldwide. Like Mary, Marists center their lives on Jesus at the service of youth. A young man named John Baptiste Montagne was ill and Father Champagne went to pray with him. Champagne realized Montagne did not know who Jesus was. From this experience, St. Marceline set out on a mission to let others know who Jesus Christ is and to invite others to develop a relationship with Christ. He needed help, recruited, and educated those who would become the Maris brothers. They met many challenges, and despite these challenges, they succeeded at the service of others because of their shared vision and faith. The Maris Institute was born. Tonight, the Maris Institute continues to grow strong, and together, Maris brothers and Maris Leite, all of us with our shared vision and faith, we welcome all new parents, students, and families to Columbus. And we do so in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, thank you as we celebrate the opening of the 2020-2021 school year. We give you thanks for the students, their parents, families, and all members of our worldwide Marist community, and in a special way, our Columbus family. As Marists of Champagne, open our hearts and minds to new discoveries and challenges. We ask your blessing upon these students and their parents that their transition to high school flow easily and peacefully. May our students develop spiritually, academically, and socially throughout their Columbus experience, rooted in the life of Jesus Christ through the intercession of Mary, our good mother. We pray for the victims of COVID-19 and their loved ones. And we thank you for the gift of technology, which allows us to connect and educate one another. We ask this through Christ our Lord, amen. St. Marceline Champagne, pray, pray for us. Mary, our good mother, pray for us. And let us remember to pray for each other. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. God bless you all. Welcome to Columbus. Thank you, uh, Mr. Gonzalez, our head of campus ministry there. I'm sure he'll have some, some great tips for you once we get the uh, school year started. Uh, he'll be able to give you some more information on confirmation and, and retreats and things like that. Now at this time, I'd like to introduce our, our administrators, uh, starting from top left to right. Our president, Mr. Tom Kruzek, our principal, Mr. David Pugh, our chief financial officer, Mrs. Ana Perez Abreu, our dean of faculty, Mrs. Teresa Chomat, uh, curriculum dean, Mr. Pedro Garcia Casals, our academic dean, Dr. Juan Vila, our dean of students, Mr. John Linsky, 
another Dean of Students, Mr. Chris McKeon, and finally our Dean of Students, Mr. Alex Trujillo. So that is your Columbus administration. Next up, I'd like to hand it over to the president of Christopher Columbus, the second president ever in the history of the school. Please welcome Mr. Tom Kruzek. Thank you, Mike. So it's great to be with all of you tonight. I certainly wish that we were together in person, but it's good to be with you, even if it's virtually through the Zoom. So tonight we have a lot of information to share with you. And I'd like to begin by talking first about the return to school plan that you received this past Friday. So in the plan, we mentioned that during the summer, we brought together the task force that includes members of our administration, our school board, faculty, staff, physicians, people from the healthcare and community leaders. Many of these are alumni and friends of the school who love Columbus and have our best interests at heart. We brought together the best minds because we wanted to create a plan that works for Christopher Columbus High School. Our top priority is the health, welfare, safety of our students, our faculty and staff. As we said in the plan that you received, as a result of the high COVID-19 positivity rates in Miami-Dade, we cannot start in-person school until the positive rates are lower. Although our faculty, staff and administration are ready and eager to welcome our young men back to school, we will take no chances with the health and well-being of your son. So school will begin on August 24th with full online learning, scenario one, and we will launch our live online e-learning classroom to deliver the superior education that you've come to expect from Christopher Columbus High School. We waited as long as we could in making the final decision with the hope that the positivity rates in Miami-Dade would improve dramatically, but unfortunately they didn't. So you'll be hearing more about the academic plan later this evening. Next, I'd like to share some information about improvements that we made to campus this summer. Summer is always a time that we do quite a bit of work here to get the campus ready for the new academic year. I'd like to provide you some more detailed information about the work that we've accomplished this summer to get ready for the start of the school year. So we improved the front entrance to the campus, we improved our parking lot. We also moved forward on several important IT projects. The return to school plan that I mentioned of August 7th has more information about the IT projects and what they'll mean for your son's education. But tonight, I'd like to focus a little bit more on the projects that we did this summer that are related to COVID and our work to keep the campus safe. Because we wanted your sons to have the best education possible, we invested in a number of projects, all designed to give us the opportunity to bring your sons back to campus as soon as possible. So during the summer, we upgraded our technology and installed state-of-the-art cameras, monitors, and microphones in all of our classrooms so that we'd be prepared for a complete interactive learning experience. This summer, we did a complete sanitation of the school, which included an electrostatic disinfection, which involved spraying the entire campus with an EPA-approved product effective on a broad spectrum of virus and bacteria, including COVID-19. We did deep cleaning of the air conditioning coils this summer. We added UV germicidal lights to all air conditioning units. This is an expensive but important protection as this will ensure that all air in the school will be treated with shortwave ultraviolet light to kill or inactivate microorganisms. We purchased quantities of masks, gloves, face shields, and rolling plexiglass screens. We also purchased plexiglass screens in areas where students are not in individual desks and thus need additional protection, such as the labs and art rooms. We replaced our drinking fountains with safe and sanitary touchless bottle filling stations throughout the campus. We added hand sanitation stations have been added throughout the campus and students will be reminded about the need to keep their hands sanitized. We added additional cleaning procedures. We'll have custodians on campus during the day to clean door handles, doorknobs, and other high touch surfaces throughout the campus. We're working with our cleaning company to enhance the nightly cleaning of our campus. And we're adding signs, posters, and floor decals featuring COVID-19 health and safety guidance. These health reminder signs are designed to educate and remind our students about how to stay healthy. We've engaged the services of a contact, uh, contact tracing company to trace any positive cases of COVID-19 and notify individuals as necessary. And we engaged the services of Dr. Stephanie DeChurch 
to provide education and training on COVID-19 to students, parents, faculty, and staff. She's been working with us throughout the summer to give us guidance, and you'll be hearing from Dr. DeChurch later this evening. In total, we've spent over $600,000 this summer on these COVID improvements to get ourselves ready for the new academic year and to make the campus safe for your sons. So with that, I'd now like to turn it over to our principal, Mr. David Pugh. David? Thank you, Mr. Kruchek, and good evening, Columbus family. I'm honored to be celebrating my 23rd year as a Marist educator, and this will be my seventh year as principal. I'm a proud father of a 2015 graduate as well. I'm also blessed to be part of the Columbus family. And this evening, I'm so happy that you will have an opportunity to meet the hardest working, most dedicated leaders in the field of education. These individuals make up our Columbus administration. Over the years, many people have asked me, what is our secret? What is it that makes Columbus special? They are always amazed that our students want to come to school. And parents ask all the time, what type of Kool-Aid are you serving in the cafeteria? Or maybe it's the cookies. While I agree the cookies are good, we know that it is not quite what makes us unique. For me, it's always been about the Marist charism. It is in our mission to make Jesus Christ known and loved through education. St. Marcin Champagnat, our founder, said to teach young people, you must love them and love them all equally. At Columbus, that's just what we do. We emulate the Marist brothers in their love of work. Our faculty and staff and administration live the mission and provide a family spirit that is genuine. You will see that everything we do is in the best interest of our young men. You are now part of the Columbus Brotherhood, part of a culture that promotes inclusion where everyone is supported and everyone is valued. At Columbus, we pride ourselves on our school diversity. Our young men come from over 125 middle schools, from as far south as Homestead and north of the Broward County line. We welcome different nationalities, cultures, and religions. The one thing the class of 2024, as well as all of our new students now have in common, is that they are now Columbus Explorers. Anticipating the Columbus experience and now part of the history and tradition. One day, four years from now, they will be part of the distinguished Columbus alumni community who continue to represent our school with integrity and pride. At Columbus, we will be involved in the spiritual, intellectual, and physical growth and development of our young men and your sons. We encourage participation as we help foster the bonds of brotherhood. We expect our students to be leaders in our communities through faith, service, and education. With clubs like Stand for the Silent and Students Against Destructive Decisions, we encourage our young men to do good. If there's one thing that is stressed, it is respect. Respect for one another, respect for our school, respect for our community, respect for women, respect for each person's unique differences. We do our best to discourage our students from making destructive decisions. I encourage you to stay involved with your son throughout his four years, check his book bags and frequently check his social media accounts and work with us as a school so that we can continue to lead your son through these next four years and really through his most formative years. High school vaping, it is an epidemic. It is something that we've seen over the last few years. Small e-cigarette devices enabling kids to vape uh, oftentimes throughout the nation in class, 
sometimes leading to suspensions. And you will see many videos and information on vaping. For the sixth year in a row, e-cigarettes were the most widely used non-tobacco product among high school and middle school students. If you smoke or vape and also get COVID-19, you increase your risk of developing more severe COVID-19 symptoms. Smoking and vaping lower the lungs immune response to infection. And about one in four high school students have used two or more tobacco products. What we try to do is educate our young men right from the beginning. As we are sharing this information with you this evening, it is so important that our young men understand uh, and know the difference of these social influences that are out there. One of the ways that we can combat this is through drug testing. And we have had a drug testing program. We were one of the first high schools to have a drug testing program in which they cut the hair. And we send these uh, the hair out to a, uh, to a, a place that, that obviously tests the hair for all types of drugs, cocaine, opiates, amphetamines, and marijuana. We are also investigating uh, one that will also detect nicotine. Why do we do this? We do this because we love our students. And again, we are here to guide and lead and mentor our young men. Once we pivot from this all e-learning online remote platform, you will bring your sons to, to campus. And so this is a map that instructs the morning drop off and the afternoon pickup. So if you are coming down 87th Avenue from Coral Way, you would make an immediate right into what's called the Maris Circle. You will see that the red lines, the red arrows will guide you down 87th in an immediate right into what's called Maris Circle. Maris Circle does offer an opportunity for many parents to drop their sons off. It is a con convenient drop off and it moves rather quickly. You go around the Maris Circle and, and back out onto 87th where you will then make a right. If you're coming from 87th from Bird Road, you will follow the yellow arrows and you will make a left into the main entrance of the school. There you will be greeted by someone very important. You will get to know our security guard, Paul. And he will guide you through the maze uh, that is the front of the campus. And he will direct you uh, to the left and back out onto 32nd. Once you get out onto 32nd, you must make a right-hand turn. So again, we have a security guard. His name is Paul DiBernito. And he will be there to greet you every morning and to instruct you on the path of this drop off and obviously the afternoon pickup. We also have a police officer who will remain on campus from 7.30 in the morning till five o'clock in the evening. This would be your morning drop off and your afternoon pickup. One way that we are able to communicate is through uh, the, the principal's newsletter. And this offers you a great opportunity to see what our students, our faculty, our staff, our school community has been up to for each month. So at the end of each month, you will have a principal's newsletter which will be sent out. I would uh, encourage you before school starts to go to the news and calendar and there you will see information and many of the newsletters uh, from over the years. Uh, there's a great deal of information. I think it's information that you would, uh, 
would love to actually uh, see uh, as it is your son in action. Oftentimes uh, you are seeing things that you had no idea that your son was even participating in because he did not come home and share it with you, but you will see it in the newsletter, I'm sure. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Pugh. Uh, next up, we have uh, actually a Columbus uh, freshman parent, Re Renata uh, Paniagua, who created this lovely video for parents. Uh, we do have an emergency app uh, for all parents to keep in, in communication uh, with any kind of emergency-based uh, situation that occurs at the school. So I'm gonna play a quick little video clip uh, on how to download the app and access it from your uh, smart devices. Hello everyone. I just wanted to share with all of you how Christopher Columbus High School cares about the safety of your children and have partnered up with the Intelligent app to be able to send out emergency alerts. Intelligent is an emergency mass communication platform that gives your school the ability to send out alerts directly to your cell phone through the app. What differs us from anyone else is that in case there is a true emergency, the app can override your silent do not disturb settings just like an Amber Alert. Miami-Dade Police Department has partnered up with Intelligent to keep private and charter schools officials informed of what is going on around their district. With that information, some schools have implemented the app as part of their emergency communications protocol, such as your son's school. When you download the app and location is turned on, you will notice that some of our other clients, such as Miami Police, Doral Police, Carl Gables, and others are also sending out alerts that you might be auto-subscribed, unsubscribed to as you drive around the county. To download is easy. Simply text CCHS to 833-369-3800 to get a download link and instructions, or search for in intelligent in the App Play Store, create a new account. Once logged in, search for a group called CCHS-Parents. Click subscribe. When prompted, the password is lowercase CCHS uppercase EMS. Thank you for being intelligent. So again, I know a lot of parents are probably watching uh, this presentation tonight. Just so you know, this is available uh, through our Columbus YouTube Live platform. Uh, and also you can access it on the website. So I know a lot of parents might be taking notes tonight, but that's just something to, to consider that this will all be available as well. Our next speaker tonight, I'd like to introduce to you, uh, Dr. Stephanie DeChurch. She is uh, going to provide you with some uh, very important uh, news on health information uh, with uh, COVID protocols. Please welcome Dr. DeChurch. Thank you, Mr. Marinelli. Uh, my name is Stephanie DeChurch. I know many of you out there as I have a son too that will be a freshman this year at Columbus. I'm very excited. And I first have to start off by telling you that you truly have one of the best, if not the best administration um, in all of Miami-Dade County, uh, probably the country. <laughs> I have never seen an administration care more about their students, um, their staff, and just the overall well-being of the community. Um, when I tell you they work 24-7, they work 24-7. <laughs> So it, it is an amazing group of people to work with and I've been very honored to, to work with all of you this summer. Um, I've been practicing down here in Miami-Dade County, if you can back up just for a second, um, for the past 20 years. Um, this year I did design a school reentry program for Columbus High School. Uh, I consulted with top physicians in the fields of pediatric infectious disease, allergy immunology, pulmonology and emergency medicine. And we worked along with the Columbus administration and COVID task force team. Um, a little bit about my background. I did graduate from the University of Florida College of Medicine. I went on to Nicholas Children's Hospital, formerly Miami Children's Hospital to do my residency. Um, and I was recognized by think, places such as New York Times, Florida Top Doctors, America's Top Physicians. Um, I'm on staff at Nicholas Children's, Baptist Hospital, South Miami Hospital, and Joe DiMaggio. And I do mentorships for Nicholas Children's Hospital Residence, Vanderbilt um, Nurse Practitioner Program, as well as being an associate professor at the FIU College of Medicine. And this year I was a founder of a new concept boutique practice in downtown Dadeland um, that does focus on quality care and personal attention. And that's the same quality that I've brought to the reentry program that I've worked with uh, with Columbus. The American Academy of Pediatrics and the Centers for Disease Control 
do strongly advocate that students return to in-person school when it is safe. And that really has been our goal. All summer, we're, we've been working towards making the school safe for the kids, to, for all the boys to return to school. Um, the American Academy of Pediatrics recognizes the many benefits that students' presence in school uh, really gives and the potential harms there are of keeping kids at home. Prolonged home isolation is not good for children. So as soon as it is, it is safe, and our public health officials tell, it's, tell us it's safe, we do plan to move forward with in-person school. Columbus has adopted the following measures to ensure the safe transition to in-person school. We have gone forward with identifying and implementing safety protocols for employees and students at high risk. We are doing daily screenings and attestation protocols. Um, we are making sure there's appropriate personal protective equipment. And this is based on individual employees' run responsibilities and students um, and, and how they are going to be interacting with each other. And we are making personalized plans for each person that is high risk. Um, Dedensification plans. We have really decreased the amount of students in each classroom, in each area, to allow for the physical distancing. Um, we have proper indoor ventilation system. We have UVC lights that kill things like COVID-19, as well as other viruses and bacteria when they go through the ventilation system. Also, we have hallways that are outdoor hallways, which are fantastic. Um, I know most of you probably saw the picture of the crowded school in Georgia. We don't have anything like that at Columbus. We have all outdoor hallways and we can have the kids spread apart. We even have little things on the floor to remind them to have some distance between each other. We have physical barriers in areas where social distancing is not possible. Um, these are plexiglass barriers. We have the availability of a fantastic remote learning system increased safety signage throughout the school and protocols for sick and absent employees and students and contact tracing and testing. Um, be mindful that your boys have and will continue to be affected emotionally and socially due to the prolonged isolation of the pandemic. Since the closing of schools last spring, we have seen an increase in anxiety and depression in our kids. This is, goes for our younger kids all the way up to their parents. Um, I have been do doing a lot of counseling in my practice um, with a lot of kids that have had a lot of anxiety, uh, families that have encountered economic stress, loss of work. Um, and for these reasons, the benefits of in-person school for these academic, social and emotional needs of our boys is well known. In particular, boys require that healthy balance of physical activity, interactive sports, and social programs, all of which we do plan on having here at Columbus right from the beginning. Um, these are things that promote the overall health of a child. And therefore, once deemed safe, we have prepared to swiftly pivot to in-person school where we will be starting all of these things. And also be mindful that you as parents um, and your loved ones may also experience increased anxiety or depression exacerbated by your children returning to school. It's strongly recommended that you engage in regular communication with your family, with counselors, with healthcare professionals, and that you prioritize healthy things for your own immune system as well as your son's immune system. Things such as healthy eating, making sure you're getting enough water, maintaining eight hours of sleep at night, exercising for at least an hour a day. Discuss with your doctor things that can be preventative medications, such as supplements, multivitamins, antihistamines. Adhere to any regular medications that your son needs to take for any chronic disease or yourself. Also perform um, a more stringent personal hygiene, such as flushing your nose with saline, gargling with warm salt water. And all, the last, but very, very important, vaccinate for influenza early to avoid the risks of co-infection. About 50% of kids with COVID-19, that's 24 and younger, present with a co-infection. 
It's only about one in five in adults, but 50%. And I can tell you from my own practice, the kids I see um, with COVID-19 have co-infections. So very important that you vaccinate against flu because flu and COVID-19 would be a bad mix. Um, expectations for modeling behavior. It's very important. Uh, boys look to their teachers. They look to their parents. They look to others to see what they're doing. If we are wearing our masks, they'll be more likely to wear our ma their masks. If you're not wearing your mask, they're not likely to wear their mask. So it's very important what we do outside of school and what we model for our boys outside of school. So one thing with, with mask wearing, I'll show you my Columbus baseball mask, is to make sure you, that you put it on properly. Make sure that you put it over your ears, you cover your nose, and you cover your chin, okay? When you talk, you don't wanna pull your mask down to talk. I see a lot of people do that, and that is where we're catching the respiratory droplets with the mask. So when you talk, you can talk right through your mask, okay? That is why we don't want 10 layers of mask. If you need something with a little higher protection, we do prefer you to go up to a surgical grade mask. So for anyone with a high risk medical condition or the elderly, we do recommend that you wear a surgical mask and if needed, a face shield. There are also a couple kind of masks that I wanted to show you. Uh, this is a valved mask. This is an N95. If you have a valved mask that you want your child to wear, make sure that you put medical tape over the back of the valve. Otherwise, when your child talks, they can expel respiratory droplets throughout the room. So very important, that is something we will be checking for. If your child has a valved mask, we will make sure that it is taped. And make sure there's always a snug fit on the mask. If your child, you notice, try them out around the house. If you notice they're always falling down over their face or they say, I can't breathe through the mask, then get some new masks. We wanna make sure the kids are comfortable in them because they will be wearing them for a very good portion of the day. They'll only be taking them off for certain breaks when we can be socially distanced and during uh, times when they're eating. Um, let me see, I went through most of these things here. Um, backup masks, make sure that your child has plenty of masks. I can tell you the first time I went to Columbus, I took off my mask and it went right down on the floor. So it's a good idea once the mask is soiled to make sure that you have extra masks. They do need, all the cloth masks do need to be washed every day. So make sure you have a good supply with you. Uh, we do have disposable masks at Columbus, but I think that they're not as comfortable as the masks that you'll be able to bring from home. Um, practice good hygiene. So if you touch anything, consider your hands contaminated. Make sure you wash the front, the back of your hands and under your nails. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. The main ways people get COVID are either they're not wearing a mask or they touch something and they touch their eyes, nose, or mouth. And then sanitize after touching anything in a bathroom. Toilet handles, faucets, the door. Um, what to do if the pre-screening questionnaire identifies your son at high risk? Um, first, I wanna make sure that everyone has filled out a pre-screening questionnaire uh, we are going to be going over those and reaching out to anyone who has identified that they have an underlying medical condition so that we can make a personalized plan for each student to make accommodations. Um, what we want you to do first is consult with your doctor. See if your child is better to stay home. We do have the e-learning that you can do if it is safer for your child to be home. Take any necessary medications and maintain proper self-care. Wash your hands, most important thing. You're gonna hear me say it again and again. If you touch any surface, if you touch anything, your hands are contaminated or assume they're contaminated and wash your hands. Avoid touching your eyes, nose and mouth again. Avoid close contact of less than six feet with others. More important for people that are high risk that they really socially distance. Um, with mask wearing, three to six feet is considered okay, but without a mask, we really need to maintain that six feet and clean and disinfect your surroundings before and after coming in contact with any fomites. So just assume when you enter into area, you enter into a table space, you enter into a desk, 
Remind your child, we're gonna have them wipe it down. And then when they leave, we're gonna wipe again. Um, seek any medical advice, even if there are mild symptoms. So even, especially in kids, kids tend to present with a sore throat, with a headache. They don't usually come to my office with severe symptoms. So if your child is sick with any symptoms of COVID, fever, cough, headache, bring them into their doctor, let them be seen, make sure that they get their COVID tests so that we can clear them to return to school. Um, and discuss any special accommodations that you might need with us. Uh, you will have my um, number, you will have my email so that you can get in touch with me if we need to make any accommodations along with your pediatrician. Um, protocols to screen for illness. Uh, we have implemented the protocols and the data clearly shows that the disease is most transmissible when a person actually has symptoms. So if the person is coughing, sneezing, that's really where they're spreading the virus. However, the person can also be contagious up to two days prior to showing the symptoms. Therefore, because of this, students and parents really do play the biggest role in preventing the spread of the illness. Because if your child is sick, if you send them to school, if you give them Motrin or Tylenol and send them on to school, they can pass this on to others. Whereas if you're very careful and you keep them home when they're sick, when even they have a mild fever, then we can prevent the spread in our Columbus community. So monitor your child for symptoms. Um, we've, if you haven't already, uh, please fill out the pre-screening form. This does ask for you to take your temperature, your child's temperature, or they can take it themselves twice a day. If anyone needs a thermometer, these are great ones to buy on Amazon. They're Mateen or iHealth, or you can reach out to me. All you have to do is touch the forehead and that's it, okay? So you can take your child's temperature every day in the morning or at night, or they can take their own. Um, they should stay home, even if they have the mild symptoms of fever of 100.4, headache, sore throat, cough, congestion, runny nose, difficulty breathing, vomiting, diarrhea, muscle pains, and loss or loss of taste or smell. Um, if your child also had a close contact exposure, that means they were either coughed or sneezed directly on, or they were without a face mask and less than six feet from another person for more than 15 minutes, who either was diagnosed with COVID or is highly suspected of having COVID, then they also need to stay home and you need to contact um, the COVID uh, email. A student with a positive PCR test cannot come to school, but should continue to take advantage of the e-learning program. And they can fully participate in classwork virtually if their symptoms are mild, okay? The student may return to school once they have had no fever for at least 24 hours. Now that this is going to be uh, circumstance dependent. Sometimes it may be where we don't bring kids back till at least 72 hours after fever. And this is without taking any medication or any fever reducing medications. Um, or that, those are the main ones. Or, and they can't have any respiratory symptoms for um, at least 10 days. I'm sorry, 10 days since the beginning of symptoms, they have to have um, the symptoms improved and we do not wanna have any child coming back still with any respiratory symptoms such as a cough. Um, or they can submit, if they haven't had any symptoms at all, they can submit a negative COVID-19 PCR test. However, we do need to make sure that COVID-19 PCR test was taken at the appropriate time. There is a period of time where you may be incubating the virus, but you haven't actually shown symptoms. So during that time, the PCR test might give you a false negative, meaning that you have COVID, but the test is saying that you don't have COVID. Therefore, if you have been exposed, you do need to wait at least seven days before taking your PCR test. If your PCR test at that time is negative, then we allow you to return to school. You don't have to remember every one of these things. You can refer to the um, policies and procedures uh, protocols, which will spell these out. Plus when you do email in, we are going to give you directly what you need to do from there. And the email is over to the right, um, the email that you send in to inform the school that your child either had contact exposure, someone in the household had contact exposure, 
or that they have had symptoms. And the contact tracing. Um, we have a contact tracing company called Scrivis that will follow up on any suspected or positive COVID case. So if your son comes to school and he has been in contact either in school or outside of school with someone that's diagnosed with COVID, you will be informed, okay? If he had close contact exposure. Now that information is HIPAA protected, meaning this is not something that we do. Um, we are able to identify the person. We do respect privacy and that's something that is um, a legal issue that we have to respect privacy for those involved. But we do inform the, anyone that has been in close contact with anyone with COVID-19 so that they can go into quarantine and get the testing as appropriate. Um, and one more time, I just put up there to please fill out your HIPAA compliant pre-screening questionnaire and attestation um, so that we can identify anyone who needs special accommodations made and that we can make a, a plan for you. And now I will pass this over to Mr. John Linsky, Dean of Students. Thank you, Dr. DeChurch. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm gonna to speak to you about our dress code and the wearing of masks. In anticipation of returning to campus, either in a hybrid mode or full operational status, we're asking that all students attend these e-learning sessions in full uniform, full uniform, just like a normal school day. School shirt, ties, trousers, shoes, proper haircuts, clean shaven, normal school day attire. That's what we're going to do during e-learning. This includes PE classes. We are asking our students to change into their PE gear just as they would if they were in school and then change back to their school uniform after PE class is over. You can get those PE uniforms uh, on our online store. On Fridays, if they choose to, they may wear an approved Columbus polo, just like we do Fridays on campus. Now we do have a bit of a situation with the ties. Um, our uniform, uh, our uniform store, Dennis uniforms, is we've had a little bit of a manufacturing situation. So there may be a temporary shortage of ties. In the meantime, Dennis uniform is going to provide your sons with a blue tie like this one until the uh, the regulation ties come in. It's not, not a big deal, we'll handle it. Mask, when we do return to campus, everyone, everyone must wear a mask or face covering all the time. Unless there is a doctor's approved medical reason, everyone will wear a mask while on campus. The mask or neck fleece, like this one I have, must be a, either a Columbus branded product or a plain generic solid colored mask or neck fleece like this. No dolphins, no heat, no Marlins, no FSU, no political statements on the mask. We want to be very consistent on that. Now that being said, we'd rather have a boy show up wearing a, a Nike mask than no mask at all. We will then give him a mask from the attendance office. Please do not drop your son off without a mask. And we thank you in advance for your support, trust, and backing, particularly during e-learning. Mr. McKeon, Mr. Trujillo, and I are always available to answer questions or render assistance. Thank you very much. And speaking of Mr. McKeon, here is our esteemed athletic director, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Chris McKeon. Thank you very much, Mr. Linsky. Uh, I am the Dean of Students and Athletic Director, but I'm also a very proud uh, Columbus father three times over. Myself, Mrs. Shomat, and Mrs. Vinson have a tie. We each have uh, had three sons graduate from Columbus, and we're all very, very proud of that. Uh, I really feel that my sons are who they are today because of a large role that the faculty and the Maris brothers played in structuring their lives and making them young men that transformed into being men today as they walk around with their families and teaching their sons and daughters exactly what they learned 
from the uh, lay faculty and brothers at Columbus. And Columbus, I applaud you parents. Uh, of course, I'm prejudiced, obviously, but in my opinion, you could not have made a better choice where to send your, your boys to school. Uh, Mr. Marinelli has asked me to talk to you about uh, the Columbus Athletic Program. Columbus Athletics uh, is second to none. Uh, the school has amassed an amazing 15 state championships, uh, numerous regional and sectional championships. And over the last 20 years, uh, our student athletes have amassed over 120 district championships. Just totally amazing. But that's the commitment of our young men and our coaches, and they are to be applauded for that. Right now, the athletic program is in a holding pattern due to the coronavirus. We're waiting for the Florida High School Athletic Association and to make a decision, and also the Greater Miami Athletic Conference, which Columbus is a member of. We are the only private school that is a member. The other 37 schools are the public schools in Dade County. Families, the only way that your son will get the true Columbus experience, and you've heard about the brotherhood, is to get him involved. It's very important your son gets a great education. He comes to school at quarter of eight and leaves at 2.30 from his class, but he doesn't leave campus. He goes to another area of the campus where he participates in an activity to which forms a bond with the other students here on campus. And believe me, uh, athletics is great. The clubs are great. I had, like I said, three sons. Two of them played basketball and were pr pretty decent players. One went on to play in college. My third son got cut from the basketball team and went out for football. And uh, he was on the football team. He really didn't play a heck of a lot, but he got out of that sport as much as anybody. He got, got friends for life. He just taught discipline and structure and dedication to which you cannot learn in any other place. Trust me, get your son involved. It is very important they're involved in something. They don't have to be stars. It doesn't have to be athletics. If your son doesn't want to be on a varsity team or such doesn't make a varsity team. The, we have a great intramural program, football, basketball, dodgeball, which I'm think, sure he would, would enjoy. There is something for everyone at Columbus High School. Mr. Pugh, since he's become principal, has added numerous clubs, uh, video clubs, robotics. Trust me, if your son has an interest, there is something at Columbus for him. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to email me and I will get back to you as soon as possible about anything to do with the athletic program and certainly looking forward to getting back uh, on campus so we can get back to our athletic program and continue to have the great success that, that we've had. Uh, and I know our last state championship uh, was uh, last December when we won the state football championship for the first time. And what many people feel was one of the greatest state championship games in the history of the state of Florida we're at 21 to 20. So uh, hopefully we'll get back to that. But if you have any questions, please email me. And uh, now I'll turn it over to Mr. Alex Trujillo, another Dean of Students. Thank you, Mr. McKeon. And good evening, Columbus family. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. I sincerely hope that you and your families are staying safe during these challenging times. I know you have received a lot of information tonight regarding our school and its policies. If you have any questions that do not get answered tonight, please feel free to contact any member of the administration and we will definitely contact you immediately. There are a couple of points I wanna to stress tonight regarding our e-learning attendance and our e-learning conduct policy. This information is based on questions we have received from parents and students in the last few months. Regarding students' attendance, students are expected to be in attendance and on time every day as mandated by Florida law. An e-learning day is a regular school day and will be treated as such. If the student does not sign in on time to his daily class, and more importantly, record that attendance with his instructor, he will be marked absent for that entire period. So it's very, very important to make sure we go over his sign-in procedures and make sure he is comfortable in communicating with both his teachers and obviously the attendance office. Now, this is the next point that I really wanna emphasize. It is the student's responsibility to ensure 
that he is logging in to his correct e-learning class on time, every day, and for the duration of the class period. Now, during these challenging times, we do understand that situations will arise. If an unexpected situation arises, for an example, like a prolonged illness, we ask the student or parent to contact his teachers immediately, as well as inform our academic dean, Dr. Vila. Dr. Vila will determine the best alternatives and a course of action for meeting the necessary course requirements. I wanted to reiterate what Mr. Linsky said earlier regarding the dress code, which is also found in our student handbook. The dress code includes a official Columbus shirt, a tie, and more importantly, yes, wearing the school official pants. Uh, we've had this question asked uh, several times in the last few days, and that's uh, something that we all as deans want to make sure that we stress. The e-learning environment does not change the requirements of our students or of your students dressing properly. Students are also expected to comply with good grooming and hygiene during each school day. This includes proper haircuts and shaving, et cetera. In terms of the communication between the students, the deans and the parents, if a student has violated any part of the code of conduct, the teacher or dean will notify the parents immediately. Now, uh, during this age or time of COVID, this notification will be through an official Columbus email, a phone call, or if needed, a Zoom meeting. With that being said, I wanna stress that you guys, please feel free to contact us if you have any questions or concerns that you would like to discuss. Thank you, God bless. Now back to Mr. Mike Marinelli. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Trujillo. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is just kind of go over some basic information uh, for parents. I know, you know there's a lot of questions out there and we're going to try and get to those uh, towards the end of the night. Uh, but first, I'm going to go over some basic uh, navigation tools for you. Uh, as parents, when you applied to the school, you applied using the on-campus app through my CCHS. So as you can see, located at the top right-hand corner of our Columbus website, columbushs.com, uh, this is the same way that you applied into the school, the same way that you saw uh, when your son was accepted. All of that stuff is done through that one uh, website. So you're going to go ahead and log in through your My CCH app, CCHS app. Uh, make sure that you, you log in with your parent uh, login information and not your son's. That's very important to note uh, because your son has certain capabilities on his end that you may not have and, and vice versa. So uh, for you as a parent, this is a great way to log in and see your son's uh, course schedule. You'll be able to see his assignments for the week. Uh, this is one of those things that I'm, I'm very glad <laughs> my mom didn't have when I was in school. Uh, so it's a great way to keep track of your son's schedule and his grades, which are updated uh, periodically throughout the week. Uh, this is also where you can see your student uh, billing area as well. So if you have any tuition statements, uh, things like that will be done through the on-campus app. So it's a great place uh, on the resources tab to go ahead and click that once you log in. And if you also, if you have another son here in the school, you'll see both sons' names, or if you have three boys, you'll see all three sons there in the top left-hand corner, and you'll be able to switch through that as you go through. Uh, we also have a wonderful information page uh, for new students. So any, any transfers or uh, incoming ninth graders, feel free to click on the admissions new student information page. And we're gonna post a lot of this information on there. So I know you may miss a few things here or there, but we're definitely gonna have all of that information on here for you to be able to see as you go through uh, with any answering any questions that you may have. Some important dates coming up. Uh, we had the consent form that was just emailed out uh, this morning, I believe. So please, uh, when you have a chance to please sign that. I know several parents did already uh, complete that, but uh, please sign that consent form uh, as soon as you can. On August 20th and the 21st, we will have our freshman orientation uh, as well as the orientation for transfer students on the 21st. Uh, Mr. Garcia Casals, uh, one of our deans, he will be uh, discussing this at, at length uh, 
in the next few minutes, but I just wanted to mention that as, as two important dates because it will be on campus. So the students will have set times that they will come in uh, for their orientation uh, times, and that would be in school uniform. And then August 24th is the first day of school. And of course, uh, we all want to know when the next holiday is. So our first uh, day off of school is going to be Labor Day on September 7th. So be on the lookout for that. I know everybody's going to be uh, excited to have their first holiday. With that being said, I'm going to hand it over to our academic dean. Please welcome Dr. Juan Vila. Thanks, Mike. And good evening, everyone. I hope you're doing well and excited for the start of school. As uh, Mr. McKeon just said, Christopher Columbus High School is a great Catholic marriage school with a uh, proud tradition of excellence in academics, athletics, and activities. Uh, and we believe in creating a well-rounded student that is exposed to a strong academic uh, and enrichment opportunities, extracurricular activities. And it is my hope that your son finds ways to enhance these traditions. Uh, we also take great pride in offering all of our students with a customized schedule tailored to multiple academic levels so they can achieve their full potential. The courses are offered in ability groupings in order to uh, accommodate the different learning styles and abilities. Uh, from this slide, you can appreciate the four different academic levels. We have advanced placement, APs, honors, accelerated college prep, and college prep. Uh, with our personalized academic paths, some students will take classes at the honors level or college prep level, while other students will take classes at different levels. Our curriculum offers a range of selections uh, that allows for our students to have the flexibility and, uh, and for the teachers to meet their needs. So your son's schedule will ultimately reflect his performance on the entrance exam, placement exam, standardized test results from the seventh and eighth grade, uh, final report cards and EOC information. For transfer students, obviously, uh, the transcripts from the previous years. And all of this data helps us to determine the correct placement for your son. In the event that you have any questions about the particular course placement, I encourage you to send me an email or uh, to please contact your son's guidance counselor. And uh, as Mr. Krushek mentioned earlier, uh, during the summer, our COVID task force, along with uh, the administration, the faculty and staff, we work diligently to prepare for the beginning of the school year. In our academic plan, we imagine the best possible scenarios to continue providing our students with high quality instruction and learning experiences in a healthy and safe learning environment that ultimately supports academic success. And as you can see from this slide, our plan consists of four different scenarios grouped in three models, the online, the hybrid, and brick and mortar. And of course, you've heard in, throughout our session that these scenarios will be flexible to pivot during, um, depending on the status of the virus in our community. So the online model is a full online learning setting where our students participate in real-time synchronous online learning through their iPads, Zoom, uh, Blackboard, which is our learning management system, and digital applications. In scenario two or three, under the hybrid model, students will be grouped by last names, A through L and M through Z. And uh, they will physically attend school either twice or three times per week, while the cohort of remote students participate concurrently in the synchronous, synchronous online learning process. Through this model, uh, we will de-densify the number of students on campus with an average class size of uh, 12 students. Finally, the brick and mortar model uh, allows our students to attend uh, school on pretty much uh, for, online, for on campus learning. However, online learning remains in place for the sake of students who are not able to attend class on campus. Once again, these scenarios will be flexible to pivot depending on the status of the virus in our community. However, the curriculum, class schedules, the bell schedule uh, will remain for the full academic school year. And regardless of the learning setting, the only constant in this plan is high quality instruction. And speaking of the bell schedule, uh, let's review the bell schedule for the upcoming school year. 
So uh, we also adapted uh, the schedule uh, following guiding questions. What schedule is most effective for our students, for their engagement, and for their achievement? And it is our firm belief that we will help, that this schedule will help us better achieve our instructional goals in an atmosphere that is more conducive to uh, learning, and it's better paced for a healthy learning environment. As you can see from this schedule, we have a modified uh, AB block. The blocks run for 85 minutes, and on Wednesday, students uh, will attend all of their classes for a shortened length of 45 minutes. So the advantages of, these, uh, of this bell schedule is that it allows uh, students to, um, to it gives students more time to develop the key concepts and uh, really to incorporate creativity into the learning process. Students will also benefit by focusing on fewer daily subjects, which uh, will allow them to explore them in greater depth. And obviously by limiting the number of daily classes, daily interactions are greatly reduced, which ultimately promotes safety. So the structure of the bell schedule will also remain in place for the school year with minor modifications, such as adding a few minutes at the end of the day when we pivot back to the hybrid and brick and mortar uh, models to accommodate for morning and afternoon announcements. Once again, I uh, would like to welcome you to Columbus. I look forward to serving you and your son to ensure we have a successful year. I will now turn it over to Mr. Garcia Casals, Dean of Curriculum and Professional Development. Thank you. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. Thank you for uh, coming up tonight uh, and being part of this presentation. Uh, I'm sure you're as eager as all of us. Um, for the start of this new uh, school year. Uh, perhaps uh, we were hoping for other circumstances, but uh, we're hoping very much and praying that uh, we'll soon be all back in school in safe uh, manner. Uh, I have been in Columbus 30 years. I'm the proud parent of two Columbus explorers, one who graduated in 2015 and one who is going into junior year. Uh, so I understand many of your concerns from a personal perspective, uh, you know, in terms of the best education that you want for your son, but also the safety that, uh, you know, you want guaranteed. Um, I'll be addressing a few items regarding academics. Uh, number one, course materials and tools. These will be crucial, uh, especially this year. Uh, over the last 10 years, we have moved into more of a uh, technology uh, infused learning system. Uh, and we have introduced iPads a long time ago, but uh, you know, they will become essential for us now uh, as we moved into this uh, virtual environment. So the iPad will be distributed um, a, along with the pictures being taken of the upcoming a, orientation days. Today, you should have received uh, in our mass emailing uh, a document indicating what the um, orientation will be like. Uh, normally, these orientations are half a day, but unfortunately, because of circumstances, and believe me, we, we debated this back and forth, uh, hoping to get all the students uh, to at least come for that one day. But unfortunately, we only um, can do uh, one hour uh, for them to be able to take care of these two items. Uh, because of the pictures, we are requiring the students come in their uniform. And so as Mr. Linsky indicated before, uh, the uh, ties are on back order. Uh, so if you don't have one, uh, our, uh, a, our clothing um, suppliers will provide a blue tie. Then it's uniform, we'll provide a blue tie, which is acceptable, okay? And we are always very flexible, okay? But uh, we want certainly that picture to look good. So we would hope that you come fully dressed in uniform. Uh, we have arranged the days so that students come at different staggered times, as you will see on this uh, document that was sent out today um, with uh, for Thursday, um, we'll have students in with last names A through L coming at three different time slots of the day. Uh, we've divided the groups into two, again, to the sense the to uh, have less students uh, in the groupings. Um, 
and uh, we have blue and white. So the blue uh, group will be reporting to the gym. The white group will be reporting to the cafeteria. And you will see in the document the uh, by the students' last names where they have to report and when. Okay. So and at some point they will switch uh, so that the ones in the gym will go to the cafeteria and the cafeteria goes to the gym to take care of the uh, situation. Transfer students, uh, if you have any, uh, if we have any transfer parents out there tonight, um, they will be coming in on Friday uh, during the last uh, session in the afternoon, 12.30 to 1.30. And again, we will have two different groupings for that. Um, the iPads, the students will leave with their iPad uh, fully set up, uh, but should you have any questions whatsoever regarding the setup or the uh, functioning of the iPad, please reach out to our IT staff, IT staff uh, at the help desk at columbushs.com. Um, they certainly will get back to you um, as soon as they can as possible. Uh, we obviously are dealing with a lot of technology issues at this time but they have a commitment to make sure that the students' iPads are fully operational. Um, the other item is digital textbooks. By now, you should have received several uh, notifications uh, regarding the purchase of the textbooks uh, through our online textbook company. Um, you will need to um, go to ccs.shelfit.com, as indicated there. And that will lead you to a little window, as you see in the center of the slide, uh, where you will um, um, have the username, the student's Columbus email. Uh, that's the student's Columbus email, not the parents. All right. That's very important. And the password would be simply the student's ID. The student's ID, in case you don't know, it's uh, also part of the email. Uh, usually the email is first name initial, last name, followed by the student ID. Uh, at columbushs.com. So using that information, you log in and proceed uh, on to uh, purchase the books. Uh, the, um, the online bookstore is linked to uh, your son's schedule. So you should be seeing his books um, populate on the shelf. Uh, if you see any discrepancies with the schedule, uh, please just alert them uh, you can contact EdTech and you'll see at the bottom of that second screen, there's a little uh, green button and that will connect you to a, um, open up a screen for uh, an email and you can send them a message and let them know that there were updates to this, your son's uh, schedule and they will take care of that. Okay, there shouldn't be any problems. Again, if you ever have any issues with the setup, uh, the iPad, the digital ex textbooks, we want to hear about it please email me uh, at any time. Uh, finally, there are most of our books are online um, and uh, eventually your sons will be able to uh, access them through, the, uh, through their iPads, download them to the uh, ShelfEd app. Uh, but there are a few uh, courses where the teachers have uh, provided uh, their own materials. Uh, in those cases, uh, they will let students know how to go about uh, getting them. Okay, so um, that the teachers will inform them. Uh, next slide. Just to give you a basic overview of our curriculum uh, for the first three years, um, as you can see, in freshman, sophomore, and junior year, our students have a course in English, math. For the freshmen, it would be algebra one, algebra two in some cases. For sophomores, it will be geometry, and for juniors who will vary, um, you know, as you advance in the uh, math. Theology every year, uh, science, uh, we begin in freshman year with biology for the most part, in sophomore year, chemistry, physical science, and then the options open up in junior year for more advanced courses. Uh, for social studies in freshman year, students will be in world uh, history. Uh, and then in junior year in American history. In sophomore year, we have several options for history, but we also open it up for uh, students who have an opportunity to begin exploring possible career pathways. And uh, here, students may obviously go the route of the history course, but they may also pursue uh, courses that will allow them to explore, for example, journalism, uh, biomedical uh, science, 
a, a engineering, a computer science, a business. Uh, there are different options. Uh, students also will take care of the world language requirement over the first two years, but then have the option to continue those over the last two. And then finishing it up, we have visual performing arts, PE, and then electives. I do want to bring your attention to a special course that we created a few years ago, this communications methodology course. We thought it was essential to provide our students with a course that would prepare them to succeed not only through their high school years, uh, but beyond uh, in college as well. And uh, it was a course to help them transition from the middle school into high school and to offer them some of the things that we have identified in the last few years as essential uh, for students to succeed. Um, Mrs. Showman will soon be talking about 21st century skills, but just want to stress uh, some of the items that we have included in the communications methodology course. Uh, we focus on organization, time management, which are essential to our students, communication skills, and some of the ways that they can uh, be more effective in communicating their ideas, uh, digital multimedia and responsibilities. Uh, students will be introduced to our responsible use policy regarding technology, and those will be stressed. Critical thinking, they will be involved in discussing and writing about uh, current events. Um, so uh, they will also be doing some research, writing, uh, we'll be helping them prepare in those areas as well as to how to go about best doing those things and then eventually be able to practice them as they move along their four years of high school. Uh, also collaboration is key, uh, group work um, and um, eventually production and presentation. On the side, you see several icons for um, some of the platforms and applications that students will be exposed to that are part and parcel of their courses uh, throughout the four years of high school. Um, you may be familiar with some, maybe not, but you'll recognize maybe some of the uh, Google, part of the Google suite, the Remind app, Notability, and, and some of the other uh, platforms. These are all e-learning tools, and you have heard a great deal already about e-learning and maybe wondering what is this e-learning? Well, over the summer, we have thought hard and long about how to uh, best achieve the kind of educations that uh, parents expect uh, from Columbus. And uh, in this uh, new situation, we feel that we really need to offer uh, an in-person, uh, if you want personalized attention through this virtual environment uh, to the extent possible until we are able to meet again in the classroom, even if it's in the hybrid setting. So we have been working very, very hard to make sure that students remain engaged and for us, this e-learning really speaks about equity, making sure that all of our students receive the same excellent education, engaging them, which is very important. And our teachers are being trained this week and next week on the best tools to achieve this and eventually empowering them. This is what uh, you know, Columbus has always been about and we wanna continue in that tradition. So anything again that you need, please don't hesitate to contact any of us, uh, you know, email me, call, uh, we're here for you. And with that, I pass it on to Mrs. Shomat, who will provide more details on our academic programs. Mrs. Shomat. Good evening, everyone. I first would really like to welcome you to Christopher Columbus High School. And before I address you as a Marist educator, I think I need to address you as a mother of three alumni and the wife of an alumni as well. I agree wholeheartedly with Mr. McKean. This is really the best school I could have ever worked in and I could have ever sent my children to. You have made an outstanding choice. And for that, I thank you. And as a mother, I thank you for entrusting your sons to us because I definitely know what that means and that kind of decision that comes at home. I want you to know that you just saw, Mr. Garcia Casal just saw, showed you your son's curriculum. There's a great deal of subjects there, but the content there has to be taught. And at Columbus, we try to teach that content, engaging in our 21st century skills. The boys learn content through communication, through collaboration with each other. We try to get their creativity skills to 
and get enhanced. We want them to use critical thinking. We want them to look at their curiosity and expand in the area that they would be interested in pursuing. But with all of that being said, we've got to see, are they growing? So we have to show some evidence of student outcomes. So the boys in every class will take a quarterly assessment every quarter. They will also, freshmen and sophomores in math and English will take the MAP test, which measures academic progress. This exam is administered three times a year and we can measure their progress throughout the year. All of our students at Columbus tend to take end of course exams. And that will be obviously at the end of the course for the upperclassmen, it could be at the end of a semester or for the other classes that are a full year, it will be at the end of the year. Our freshmen take PSAT 9 and pre-ACT, as well as some of the upperclassmen will be taking SAT and uh, ACT. All of this is in preparation for the very important exams that are being given in order for our young men to get into college, high stakes exams. Mike. Now, we talked about collaboration and communication. How do you communicate with us? Well, you go to my CCHS and you go to the on campus and parent, teachers and student communication is essential. All teachers are expected to post grades by Friday and lesson plans with class activities and assignments before Monday morning. So before Monday morning, sometimes Sunday night, or even before, some teachers post even Friday before they leave campus, you will know your son's classes and they will know what courses and what tests they have, what they have to study, what their assignments are for the upcoming week. Another way is to be very much involved in what is actually going on here for the parents. We will have on Tuesday, September 1st, we will have back to school night Zoom presentations. Progress reports, you'll see them on on campus on September 21st, Monday. Progress reports measures your students' progress within half of the quarter. So half of the quarter will have gone, gone by by September 21st. And believe it or not, as far as that seems, that'll be just around the corner. You will be able to see what his progress is at that point. And you can communicate with the teacher because there's plenty of time to either congratulate the young man or make sure that his grades come up, whichever the case may be. The freshman guidance parents meeting will be on Wednesday, September 30th. And if you are a transfer student on our calendar, you will find that every Wednesday night throughout September, you will have the senior, junior, and sophomore uh, guidance parents meeting. The end of the first quarter will be Friday, October 16th. And after October 16th, on October 28th, we will have our online parent teachers meetings. They will probably be via Zoom by appointment only, and you'll be able to make appointments from 6 to 7.30 p.m. Now don't rush about these dates. You'll get plenty of information prior to each one of these dates on how to go about communicating with us. I will say that in this virtual world, communication is essential. Please email the teachers, email the counselors a little later. I will introduce you to your son's counselors. Email any of us, the administrators. We are here to serve you and serve the young boys that you entrust to us. Thank you. And I now give the floor to our president, Mr. Tom Krushek. Thanks, Terry. So we have more information to share with you this evening, information about guidance, about campus ministry, student activities, and there'll be the opportunity for questions as well. But right now, I'm excited to let you know that work has begun on the new Marcus Limonis and Mario Suedes Center for Science and the Arts. And it'll be completed by March of 2022. This new building will be an extraordinary boost to your son's education. He'll have the benefit of state-of-the-art learning opportunities in the sciences. Think of classes such as cybersecurity, robotics, computer science, as well as amazing experience in the visual and performing arts. No school in Miami or perhaps the state can offer what this new building does. Now it's my honor and privilege to introduce Brother Kevin. For those of you new to Columbus, Brother Kevin has devoted his life to serving the Marist mission through Columbus High School and previously served as president for 18 years. Brother Kevin has poured his heart and soul into the school and into caring for our Columbus students. And Brother Kevin has a message for you. Good.
Good evening. Good evening. My name is Brother Kevin. I've had the pleasure of being at Columbus for 48 years in different roles, teacher, basketball coach, athletic director, principal, and president. During those years, I have met many wonderful parents, alumni, and students. I've had the joy of working in development and asking people for money to help Columbus since 1980. Thanks to the generosity of our parents, alumni, and alumni parents, we have been able to improve our facilities for our students. Over the past 40 years, we have built the Abraham Science Building, the Lawrence Bell Media Center, the Genevieve Abraham Chapel, the Lamonas Passageway between the B and the C Building, the Moss Technology Center, the Fitness Wellness Center, expanded our gym, put artificial turf on our football and baseball fields, built locker rooms for our baseball teams, added impact windows throughout the school, and have kept up with the latest trends in technology for our teachers and students. I know this is a very difficult time for all of us with the coronavirus, and with so many people sick and being out of work. However, I do want to tell you about the four-story building that we are planning to erect where our tennis courts are. The first floor will have STEM classes, locker rooms, robotics, and an outdoor eating place for the students. The second floor will be parking. The third floor will be classrooms and a lecture room and the fourth floor will be art rooms, band rooms, and CCNN studio. We plan to have the building ready for use by March of 2022. The cost will be about 25 million. So far, we have raised over 20 million in pledges from our parents, alumni, alumni parents, and friends. I know this is a very difficult time for everyone, but we are asking if you can make a pledge within your financial means to help Columbus. Your son will benefit greatly from this new building. I would personally like to meet with each family in my office when school begins. One of our secretaries would be calling to make an appointment. If for some reason you are not able to come to the school, we would request a conference call with you. Normally, when we have this meeting in the cafeteria with our freshmen and transfer parents, I would tell some stories about people that I met and asked money from. However, since this is a virtual meeting, I just want to relate one story. As you are aware, Columbus offers over $1.5 million in financial aid to needy parents so that their sons can attend Columbus. We never want to refuse a student admission because they cannot pay the full tuition. One day when I was in my office, when I was president, a parent came in and thanked me for the financial aid she had received for her son. She said, brother, I cannot help much with your campaign for the mosque building, but I promise I will come in every month and give you $10 for the building. I will do this for four years. You have my word. I know that this is not much, but I want to do something to thank the school that is doing so much for my son. Needless to say, I was deeply touched by what she said. She never missed a payment. Some people can give more than others, but we just want everyone to do something to help us put this building up for your sons. Please help us within your means. The Maris Brothers, administration, 
faculty and staff, thank you. God bless you and your families. Be well and safe. I pray your son has a great experience at Columbus. I know our president, Mr. Tom Kujak, Mr. David Pugh, our principal, the administration and faculty will do all that they can to make certain your son gets a Marist education. We are here to make Jesus Christ known and loved through the Christian education of youth. God bless you, Adelante. Okay, welcome back. Um, so next up we have uh, real quick some campus life information and then we'll close it out and, and get to some questions and answers from some of our uh, YouTube live participants. Uh, with that, I'll hand it over to Ms. Uh, Terry Chomet. Thank you, Mike. Um, I would like to first take two seconds to say, thank you, brother Kevin. I've worked here 31 years and I can say that every single cent he's ever gotten, he's reinvested in this school. So I thank you as a parent for making a difference for my student, my, my own personal sons. Let me introduce you to our wonderful guidance department. Our department leader is Ms. Betty Vinson. She's a department leader and learning specialist. And as a learning specialist, she works closely with students that have unique learning needs. Our senior counselors and camp counselors are Mr. Carlos Nunez and Ms. Jackie Horowitz. Mr. Nunez works with those students whose last names begin A through L, and Ms. Horowitz works with those students whose last names are M through Z. And pretty soon they'll start the uh, big push towards getting the seniors into college. So this is a really busy time for them. They will be doing boot camp. So if you're a rising senior by any chance, you make sure you're involved with the boot camp. Ms. Debbie Martinez is one of our junior counselors and she's also our Christian service coordinator. Here at Columbus, the boys should have 25, were, are required to have 25 hours of community service every year. And that means that, that by the end of graduation, by graduation, they will have accumulated 100 um, hours of service. Mr. Jason Hill is our other junior counselor and he serves the students M through C. He's also our NCAA recruiting coordinator. Brother John Healy is our sophomore year counselor and he serves all our sophomore students. If you're a freshman parent, then the next batch of people are very important to you. Mr. Jacob Grant is our freshman counselor serving the students whose last names begin with A through L. Mr. Carter, I'm sorry, Dr. Carter Burris is the other freshman counselor and he serves the students M through Z. Brother Eladio is a learning specialist and he serves all our college prep freshmen and sophomore students. So please feel free to reach out to him. And Mrs. Pat Call is the academic administrative assistant. And I must say to guidance and to myself, she is our right-hand person. She really is essential for all of us. Mike, back to you. All right, and uh, last but not least, I'll go over a few things uh, real quick. So Mr. Uh, Gerardo Gonzalez, you met him earlier when he started with the prayer. Uh, he's our director of campus ministry. Um, as a Catholic Marist institution, we have several leaders here on campus, Brother Michael Brady, one of our former principals, uh, will be uh, also heavily involved in the campus ministry department, Mrs. Ada Allegret, and Brother Tom Long. Uh, they're all uh, important parts in helping run retreats, as well as uh, making sure that we're a Catholic marriage institution, okay? Uh, also, we, we encourage all the parents and students to stay informed as we go through. We have an award-winning national champion, uh, CCNN Live, the Christopher Columbus News Network, uh, which, which runs the daily broadcast to the entire school. They also uh, cover many live sporting events and things like that. So the best way to keep informed is to follow us on all social media channels, uh, including Remind, uh, all, all the apps that are out there, you know, YouTube Live, uh, Instagram, Facebook, there's so many channels now for parents and students to, to stay informed as we move through. Uh, and then also Student Activities Committee, our SAC committee is wonderful. It's run uh, by Ms. Ms. Kim Brown, as well as Mr. Connell. Uh, you can contact Student Activities 
at columbushs.com. If your son would like to be involved, we're going to have a club fair, uh, most likely in the beginning of the year. Uh, we don't have a set date yet on that, but I believe it'll be sometime in September where your son can view all the clubs that are out there and, and begin to get involved in his journey here at Columbus. Uh, and of course, there are many social events that we do put on. I know Beach Bash is a big thing uh, with a lot of the kids out there. And, and as of right now, unfortunately, the, the Beach Bash is probably going to be postponed. Uh, so that's just something to look forward to. But again, just because it is an all-male environment, your son will have a, a great experience here and, and in social events. There's homecoming, there's prom, there's all the same social events that you would have in any other high school. Uh, so again, we encourage your son to get involved and, and stay involved in his time at Columbus. Now we'd like to open the floor to several uh, questions uh, that were posted up on the, on, the, on the YouTube live right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and start steering the questions as we, uh, as we move forward. How's everybody doing out there? All right, give me a second. Sorry, I'm closing up my PowerPoint here. Okay, so our first question, I'm probably gonna direct this over to, um, I guess either, I would say Mr. Garcia Casals or Dr. Vila. The question would be, when is the new school year calendar going to be posted? Okay, well, the calendar is available uh, online uh, from our Columbus site. You can um, pretty much see what events are going on, but I guess you may be talking about the year at a glance that we've had in previous years. Uh, that will be coming out this week, probably next week at some point. Yeah, it'll be probably one of our uh, part of our mass emailings. We had hoped to have it uh, for this evening, but I'm sure that you would like to have it for yourself to put it up on the refrigerator and so forth. So we will be coming out with that shortly. I don't know if Dr. Vila needs to add anything in this regard. Okay, perfect. Uh, our next question. Uh says, hello, for the transfer student orientation on Friday the 21st, do the students report to their area for the one hour slot allotted to them or is it a half day? That would be Mr. Garcia Casals. Yes, uh, no, it's not a half day. It's only for the hour that is indicated on the uh, orientation um, information. And they will report according to their last name, whether blue or white, to either the gym or the cafeteria. So they report to there, and then from there, they will probably move to the other um, area to take care of, for example, if it's iPads or, you know, pictures, whatever the case may be, but it's only for the one hour. It's not half a day. Okay, we had another question with regards to the uh, orientation. Maybe Dr. Vila, you can take this one. Uh, so for orientation, uh, last names A through L on 820, are the kids dropped off and stay for only one hour or are their student names listed or are they their lead teacher names for each group? How and when will the white blue groups be assigned? I believe that was already sent out uh, this morning. Go ahead. Absolutely, Mrs. Marty sent an email blast this morning uh, where the schedule is listed. Uh, students have been uh, categorized based on last names. Uh, as Mr. Garcia Casales mentioned, either blue group or white group. The uh, blue group uh, reports to the gym, the white group to the cafeteria. And, uh, you know, it's a very small cohort of students where we will be practicing social distance. Please make sure that the students are in school uniform, wearing their masks. And if you have any questions regarding orientation, please feel free to contact us. But uh, all, all of this information is listed in the email blast that went out this morning. Thank you. Don't go anywhere, Dr. Vila, you're still up. <laughs> So the next question would be uh, number of average students per class. Dr. Vila, go ahead. Absolutely. Uh, well, I mean, we are very blessed. Like I said, in a hybrid schedule, we're looking at the class average being 12 students. So, um, you know, on average, uh, our class average is 24, uh, A through Z. So uh, we are working uh, with the teachers, with the students. Uh, and like I said, based on the flexibility that we have with the different ranges of academic level, our goal is to have a small class size where we could uh, focus on the students. Now, uh, they are the exceptions, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, some classes are in high demand, very popular. And certainly, you know, we have uh, made the necessary arrangements, but uh, once we pivot to the hybrid schedule, the class size should be around 12 students uh, per course. Thank you, Dr. Vila. 
Uh, so let's go to, I guess, uh, Mr. Garcia had a question uh, regarding a class assigned for his son. Who, uh, I guess they would want to know who to contact. Uh, Ms. Chomat, you can go ahead and take this one. If you have a question with your son's uh, classes, I would suggest you start by reaching out to their counselor. Uh, the counselor is in our is listed here, and you can go online to our website, and you will find the counselors are listed by again your son's your last name and what year they go to school, and you'll start there, and the process begins. If you have trouble, please feel free. You can reach out to me, and I will definitely point you in the right direction. Perfect. Next up, I guess this would be uh, towards uh, Mr. Linsky or uh, Mr. Trujillo, if anybody would like to take or Mr. McKean. Um, I think the main question would be issues with uniforms. A lot of, a lot of parents asking questions with regards to the, the delay with, with dentist uniforms. If, if possible, what, what's the, the situation there? Well, that's an ongoing thing. We just found out about it really today. Obviously, uh, we use common sense in a situation like this. We understand when there's a shortage uh if for example let's say the pants don't come in uh you can't get pants beige dockers are fine okay no problem the blue tie situation when in doubt wear a white button down shirt um we'll work these things through we have 1700 boys and there are occasional things like this but um it's not in today's world it's not really the most important thing right now we'll be fine Perfect. Uh, I think I can answer this one. <laughs> For orientation day, are students allowed to bring a backpack uh, to place their iPad in uh, or any other information? I believe so, but I'll, I'll let Mr. Pugh take that one. Go ahead. Absolutely, Mr. Marinelli, that is not a problem. Students can bring a backpack if they wish. And uh, to follow Mr. Linsky, I would use the word flexibility. Okay, uh, let's let's send this one over to Dr. DeChurch. Uh, in the case that uh, their son tests positive or someone around them tests positive, I guess they just wanted to, uh, you know, a real a recap on that again, just one, one, one time if they maybe tuned in a little bit later, but what, what's the process if someone does test positive for, for COVID-19? Well, on the website, there is an email, a COVID email. You would email in that your son either tested positive or if your son was exposed, or if your son has symptoms. At that point, the school takes that information and passes that on to Scrivis. They're our contact tracing service. They will reach out to the family. They will also reach out to anyone who possibly could have been exposed by that person, whether it was in school, over the weekend, or at a, another time. They will contact trace anyone that had exposure to that student. Um, that student that is positive will need to quarantine until at least 10 days after their symptoms have started and they're fever free for one to three days. This will all be something that we will be uh, going through with you as your child is put into quarantine. We will have a return to school um, program for them and they will be transferred over to e-learning while they're home during that quarantine. If they're well enough to do the, the e-learning, which most boys that get COVID-19 are well enough to continue on with the learning, then they'll go ahead and do that. Um, if not, that's something that you would reach out to the COVID um, help email also and let us know so that we can make accommodations for you. Thank you, doctor. Our next, uh, our next question will go to uh, Mr. Garcia Casals. That's a textbook question uh, from Mr. Bermudez. We keep getting emails about online bookstore. Uh, do we wait until he gets his iPad to purchase his textbooks? Uh, uh, you can purchase your textbooks at any time. Um, these are online. So uh, from any desktop or any device, you can go to ccs.shelford.com purchase the bundle, which is the same price, regardless of what textbooks you have. Um, the student can see his books from the desktop unit, from a phone, uh, but eventually he'll be able to download them through the app on his iPad 
and access them there, but he doesn't have to wait until he gets his iPad for that. Certainly not. Thank you. Uh, our next question comes from uh, Mr. Milian. Uh, do the students in the MOS program, or any students for that matter, uh, need the blazer uh, for school pictures? Mr. Pugh, you can go ahead and take that one. No, we, uh, we will not expect that our students uh, attend in blazer, uh, shirt, tie, proper school uniform is all that's necessary. And if I could also um, reiterate a bit on what Dr. DeChurch had mentioned, uh, I think it's very important that there's a level of accountability uh, that we have to expect from our families and from our young men. They may be excited and enthused about attending school and coming into the building when that time comes. But if they are sick, they must stay home. Uh, it, it's very important that our young men and our families understand that, that there is a level of accountability that will be expected. Uh, if they are sick, they must stay home. I can't say that strong enough. Uh, we must all work together in this. Otherwise, we will find ourselves back in a very difficult situation. And so uh, we, we, we would just expect that the families, please, um, you know, engage in the communication and contact the school should there be any questions. Uh, contact Dr. DeChurch and she will, I'm sure, guide you in, 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 in the right, with the right decision. Thank you, Mr. Pugh. Our next question is directed, I guess, towards uh, Dr. Vila. Um, it's a two-part question. One would be, uh, can my son attend the other orientation date? They, they're dropping off another son out of college, which is very common. Uh, can they switch dates? And then the second part of the question would be, what is the status of academic study hall? Sure, absolutely. Uh, we ask all the parents, if possible, to please uh, uh, can follow the uh, schedule that has been assigned. Obviously, we're doing this to protect uh, your son. But if, if uh, for unforeseen uh, reasons or an emergency, you cannot attend uh, during the assigned time, yes, absolutely. We could make the necessary uh, arrangements. Uh, just send me an email or uh, send Mr. Marinelli an email and we will accommodate accordingly. And the other question regarding academic study hall, yes, for those of you that have been, uh, re that are required to attend academic study hall, uh, this is being postponed. Once again, like Mr. Pugh said, flexibility is the key. This is being postponed until we pivot to the hybrid or the brick and mortar schedule. But rest assured, all of our teachers are available before and after school. Uh, they will be scheduling Zoom meetings. Therefore, uh, after school, you have a question with a math problem or you have a, a, a question regarding the homework assignments, teachers are available every day after school. Parents, the same thing is for you. If you have a question, if you would like to meet with the teachers, please contact them directly. As Mrs. Shomet said, collaboration and communication is the key. And I know that many of them might tell you, mom, dad, please don't get involved. I'm a, I'm a student in high school. I could deal with my own uh, grades and my own responsibilities, please. Uh, you know, we accept them as boys and eventually they graduate as young men. Uh, but please, please, please keep an eye out for them. Uh, grades are, you know, the grade book is live. Please ensure that they are complying with their responsibilities. And all of us are here to ensure that he has a successful school year. Dr. Vila, also uh, getting a lot of questions on the, on the structure of the orientation by last names. If you could just expand on that a little bit. I think, I think some of the parents might be a little bit confused on on the last name and the timings and things like that. Absolutely. On uh, Thursday, we have uh, students scheduled with last names A through M, A, A through L, that is freshmen only. And uh, between the hours of 8 to 9 a.m., we have uh, last names Abdullah to Contreras. And within that sub, with that group, we have divided them into a blue group and a white group. The blue group, they actually go to uh, the gymnasium. The white group, reports directly to the cafeteria. And the same thing happens with when we meet with a second group, an hour and a half later, we are giving 30 minutes after the sessions for students to be picked up and then enough time for the other students to come in. And the second session starts from 9.30 to 10.30 with last names Coppola to Gamilla. And the same will continue for Thursday and Friday. And uh, the last session of the day 
is uh, scheduled for, it's reserved for all of the transfer students and uh, the transfer students with last names A through L, uh, they're, in, they're the blue group and M through Z are the white group. So once again, if you have any questions regarding this schedule for orientation, please uh, feel free to reach out to us. And at the same time, I understand that the communications methodologies teachers will be reaching out to all of the students to actually give them an orientation on how to use the iPad and uh, the much needed technology. So uh, please keep an eye out on that email because it will be coming out shortly. Thank you, Dr. Vila. Um, the, the next question is, I guess, when will we reassess the re-entry uh, back into school? I, that's, that's, a, that's a pretty interesting question. I don't know who to send that one to, uh, if, if anyone wants to take that one. Let me jump in on that first, and then I'm gonna, defer, I'm gonna throw it to Dr. DeChurch. So I watch a variety of metrics every day. And you know, I, around 4.30 every day, I start looking for the moving to the new normal dashboard because the mayor's office comes out with that every day. So, so we're going to watch these metrics every single day. We're going to watch them every day. You know, I'm also consulting regularly with Dr. DeChurch and with our other members of the health advisory group. And we want to pivot to the hybrid scenario as safe as it's so, as soon as we, it is safe to do so. And we will do so because we want to get our guys back to school. We absolutely want to get them back to school, but we're going to do it only when it's safe to do it. So we're watching the metrics and we're watching it every day. Okay. And, and that's really what we're going to try and do. Dr. DeChurch? And I, I will give you some good news. There has been a very slow but steady decline, decline in overall cases and um, admissions to the hospitals. We have seen the 14-day average um, dip down to in the 14% now. So that's um, really good news. So we're getting close. We're getting close. Excellent. Thank you, guys. Uh, all right. Are, are the boys getting iPads and do they come with a cover? Yes, they will be getting an iPad and they do come with a cover and a keyboard. I can answer that one. I do know that, uh, you know, the boys will be boys and there is an insurance program with that. And, and hopefully they don't shatter their iPads, but these things do happen. So uh, just make sure that they take care of it. It is a school device. And I, I would just stress this is make sure, you know, to limit any kind of gaming on that thing because they will the boys will be boys and they will take advantage of that. So make sure to, to keep the, the games off of there if possible, parents. Okay. Um, I guess uh, someone asked here, Mr. O'Connor asked, uh, how will service learning look like this year and how will it be tracked? Um, I'm not sure who can, who can take that one. Mike, I, I think I'll take that. Um, our Christian service uh, will be uh, a new coordinator, Mrs. Debbie Martinez will take over and she uh, is going to be quite, quite creative in uh, ways for our students to uh, find areas in our community and inside our own school community to perform these uh, types of hours. And so the state of Florida, I'm sure, will uh, require the hours as they did last year for the Bright Future Scholarships. And so we will make every intention for our students to, uh, to have the opportunity to perform these hours. Also, Mr. Marinelli, I just wanted to say that uh, in terms of after school study halls or uh, additional aid and assistance, um, I've been contacted by a few of our honor societies. Uh, Mr. Morrow with the Math Honor Society will offer after school and before school um, assistance and tutoring through the Math Honor Society. So our students will perform those uh, activities. And uh, I, I'm very happy to hear that many of our honor societies uh, will be involved in this. And those students obviously are receiving hours while also uh, helping many of our students um, get through these courses. And so, uh, you know, I just wanted to share that information as well. Yeah, I guess I can, uh, this next question, does, does the schedule allow time for breaks in between periods and classes in the virtual space? Um, I guess I'll, I'll toss that to one of the academic deans. Sure, absolutely. Uh, we have uh, five minutes embedded between periods as a passing period uh, in a virtual environment, the same 
uh, the same structure remains. And the reason for that is obviously we do not want to extend the academic uh, day or the actual day until four or five o'clock. So in essence, five minutes uh, passing time, students have on average 45 minutes uh, for lunch. And uh, I apologize if you hear children in the background. Mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> and with that, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to let me know via email. Dr. Vila, that's why I, I did it from my office. <laughs> I would have been in the same predicament. It's, it's great. Okay, uh, next question would be, I have not received my son's issued uh, school email. Uh, I believe you'll receive that during the orientation as well if you have not, but I'm sure you can also contact us here in the office and we'll be able to get that school email for you. But in case you're wondering, it's your first initial, last name, and student ID number at columbushs.com, and that is through the Gmail suite. Okay, uh, let me see. All right, uh, I, I guess a, another one would be when, what, is there a time frame on when we will reassess coming back into the hybrid setting, at least transitioning into that? Is there a set time for that to happen or is it just an, an ongoing day-to-day -day thing? I, I guess that would be Tom. Yeah, yeah, Mike, it, it's gonna be an ongoing day-to-day -day thing. And what we're looking for is, as Dr. DeChurch mentioned, the 14-day the positivity rate over the 14 day period. That's really what we're looking at. We're looking to see that come down. You know, obviously I'm nervous about Labor Day as we get through the Labor Day weekend, but we really wanna see that number come down to um, a little bit lower than what it is right now. And again, we're gonna be consulting with all of our doctors, with Dr. DeChurch, and we're gonna make the right decision, but we wanna get our guys back, obviously. Sorry, I was on mute there. Uh, looks like I'm running out of questions, so that's a good thing. Uh, hopefully, hopefully we've answered a lot of a, a lot of questions. I know it's it's been you know a, a pretty long night. We've been on since six, but uh, you know that that's what we're here for. I think as a Columbus family, we want to leave no stone un, you know, unturned here and, and and get everything going here as the year gets started. Um, does anyone have any last comments before we take off? I know I know everybody's excited uh, to get back to school. So if anyone has any last words. Uh, go for it. Beautiful. Mr. Pugh, go ahead. Well, Mike, I just want to thank uh, the parents and the students uh, who have been with us for the last uh, hour and a half. Uh, we certainly thank them for their continued support. and We look forward to working with them here in the future. Um, we understand that we must foster uh, the relationships between these young men and foster the, the bonds of, of, of brotherhood. Uh, we certainly understand that. We will do all that we can through uh, the clubs and activities, uh, through sports, coaches, mentors, uh, through campus ministry. Most importantly, uh, we will maintain our, uh, our commitment to retreats and uh, the freshman charisma and many of the activities that foster these relationships uh, we are hopeful that we can move to the spring. So uh, as we did last year, we did not cancel. Mr. Kruchek and myself made a commitment to the senior class that we would have graduation and we did. And uh, we are committed to um, not necessarily canceling these activities early on in the school year. We're very hopeful that we will be back in the building and that we will be able to postpone and move these uh, events possibly in the spring. So, uh, but we certainly understand and, and we appreciate and we thank you for, uh, for having the patience. Um, but really, you know, we have to do what's right and we have to hold ourselves accountable. And I encourage everyone to go out there and wear a mask and take the CDC guidelines seriously so that we can get back in school. I'll leave with that. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Mr. Kruzek, any, any final words before we uh, close out? Thank you all for being here today. We really appreciate that this is your first step forward into the Brotherhood. I know we've got a lot of alums who are out there as well, but thank you for being with us. Thanks to the administrative team and everybody for being here today. And we look forward to seeing you on campus and seeing you on campus soon. So take care and adelante. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye now. <laughs>